I presume the statute of limitations for building and operating a pirate radio transmitter have long ago expired. Um, in Norway in the 70s there was only one government run FM radio station and that sucked. I believe I have some small honor in bringing that monopoly to an end. The um, Televeket, which is the equivalent of the FCC, was um, tracking down, tracking down uh, radio pirates, so I wasn't particularly interested in being tracked down, so I went underground quite literally. This transmitter is uh, designed to be actually buried underground. It consists of a uh, wooden box, and the top slides open like this. Now the connection for the antenna is not here anymore, but the antenna was a just a black wire and with some elastic band and a clothespin on the end of it. It was blackened with shoe polish and uh, just attached up in a bush or a tree or something like that. Anyway, here's the actual transmitter which ran as close to 100 megahertz as I could get it to. This section here is the RF amplifier. It's a variable capacitor or some coils and transistor. These are the batteries that power the transmitter. 14 in all, but they're connected double so that they have, uh, it's only 10 and a half volts, but lots of amps. I suppose it put out three or four watts. This is a painting by Claude Monet of the Colses Mountain. This is the mountain where I preferred to transmit from. I usually had the transmitter buried somewhere about two-thirds of the way up, up here somewhere. Uh, Claude Monet was in Norway in 1895, and this is the village of Sonbika and the somewhat famous cast iron bridge in the village. From the mountain it's a clear view right down to the center of Oslo, only 10 kilometers away. Now I've actually heard this transmitter about 50 kilometers to the south. That's sort of cheating because I had a sailboat with a receiving antenna at the top of a 10 meter mast. Now on the other side there's a clock and a tape player. I've added extra gears and bearings to the clock so that the, the dial only makes one revolution a day instead of two. the minute hand and the second hand function normally. So once a day while this dial rotates, this spring-loaded switch um, moves into this notch. Now when that happens, the capacitor is discharged through a motor which is down here, which runs for a few seconds. That's this one. Now that I see that the capacitor and the uh, motor have been disconnected for some reason. This is well over 30 years old. Now this is a cam on the end of this motor axle here. Um, two thirds of the cam are filed down from all the way from here to here. This part is raised. The cam operates uh, this switch, which um, determines whether or not there would be a transmission that day or not. So if the cam happened to stop in the low area, file down area, nothing will happen. There will be no transmission. If it landed on the high part, like here, there would be a transmission. After tw every, every 24 hours, the capacitor will uh, dis be discharged and giving a new opportunity for a one in third chance of a transmission. Now when there was to be a transmission, power from these two batteries uh, would be connected to a little blue motor down here that operates this gear drive. The gear drive depresses the play key on the tape player and then it turns itself off.
when the tape was finished uh, playing it automatically was uh, rewound and the whole thing shut down. These are by the way the batteries to the powering the tape player. So all this means that there was only a one in three chance that a transmission would occur on a given night. I usually set it to start at a quarter to eleven. I figured that would be a very inconvenient overtime for the televac, and at the same time there'd be a lot of people still awake. Um, I usually transmitted for only about 30-40 minutes. Because of the geography and the mountain reflections, multipath and the like, and also the fact that it didn't even, even transmit every night, I think it's almost impossible to track this down. This is, by the way, the this is the um, frequency meter, which is used to check that it's operating on the right frequency. It's a little diode here, lights red when it's correct. Here's the circuit there back here, coil on the diode, and some. You like it? You think my private center is cool? You like my private center? Don't you? You like it? You like it? What do you think? What do you think? <laughs>